AFI began its work as a private service provider in 1974 by developing an outreach and tracking program. This program kept youth out of state institutions and worked with youth in their homes by promoting accountable behavior. The program expanded to meet the needs of youth who could not remain at home by developing a foster care component. AFI operates uh, more than 65 programs, residential, foster care, and daycare service for adolescents and adults in nine separate states. Dr. McCall is the author of many texts, including the classic Closing Correctional Institutions. He frequently lectures, trains, and consults throughout the world. Dr. McCall, welcome to the Providence House. We're going to again. Thank you. Good evening. And it's uh, such a wonderful uh, group of young people. And uh, also to hear the two uh, important leaders, uh, three more than two, four, whatever, uh, speak the way you used to. It's really just to show how can you, you can do real role modeling for young people. Uh, the, the programs here are the best programs that we have. And the reason is not only because we have good staff who are doing a good job, but also it comes down from the passion and the wonderful commitment that Steve shows. This is something that you will push to make sure that young people get a good opportunity for success. Since the beginning of the, of the organization, we always believe that young people have much more influence on other young people than uh, the adults. Young people can really be the one that can, can influence and make things happen if they are guided by the, uh, the right direction. And this is really the essence of the youth leadership program uh, that we have here and in many other states. Uh, we also believe that connecting young people with the symbol of authority in a, in, in a city, in a state, uh, it can bring a lot of good things to happen. So uh, that combination of young people, connection to the symbol of authority, and giving them the opportunity to become the leaders is the key to what we do. I do want to thank uh, Jay and Paul and Marianne and the rest of the people who are in, in, in NAPI that were that make this happen. I I do want to tell you that uh, the way they talk about this program in other states is really very unique, and it makes others really want to come and visit and see how you are doing the job that you do. So I want to. Thank you for inviting me. Um, pleased to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Paul Lewis, the director of training for uh, Youth Link. And all the positive approaches, I guess that's still around too. But Paul and I have known each other for a long time. He actually worked at the house here for a short period of time. And years later, he came back as a commissioner for a short period of time as well. Paul has an extensive background in community development, teaching, and training that strongly shaped Youth Link's evolving work. As a master trainer and co-developer of the uh, Youth Police Initiative, our other program, which many of you guys are graduates of, uh, he oversees the certification process of all of Youth Link's trainers. Paul has also been a catalyst and an innovator of Youth Link's uh, leadership academy while also bringing Youth Link to new cities. As I mentioned, he is also a former professional athlete. Uh, I'm call my good friend Paul. You got a few words to say, Paul? Yes, yes, please. please. <laughs> I already got that. I don't have a tie on. I already got crap when I have the tie on. I left my blue and gold tie in Newport because that's where you guys would like to go. Um, as Steve said, I, I, I don't have a lot to say. I just, what I would like to do is have the kids stand up and you recognize them. Yeah. What you're looking at here, it's been, it's been a long process. Steve talked about 
you know, we've been talking about this for a long time, but thank God I work for an organization, Dr. Bacall and Jay and Mary Ann, we work for an organization who has the vision and the foresight and the courage to invite and engage young people in the, in the field of leadership. Uh, we, we like to rebuff the fact that leaders are leaders of tomorrow, young people leaders of tomorrow, which they can be. But we, we don't believe that necessarily. Because why wait? These kids, every day you wake up, have an opportunity to lead and can do great things. So that's what we're hoping for for these young folks. We're hoping that they're going to lead today, and they have been leading, and they're going to lead into the future. So I'm, you're talking about proud. I'm just so proud of you guys and the great work that you've done. You look terrific. Uh, you know, and, um, and keep up the good work. We're only halfway through. We have some other work to do. So uh, uh, I would like also to, to thank Carinel and Alex. You know, please stand up, Alex, Carinel, Jose. You know, these folks here. These folks know these kids better than anybody. And, uh, and they do tremendous work getting these kids together, getting them, getting them engaged. These kids meet twice a week for two hours a night in the heat of the summer. And they come, and they show up. And if they have to be at a particular site at 4.15, then they're at 4 o'clock. They need to be there at 4.30, they're at 4.15. So these kids are ready. So Providence, you, you better get ready. And you need to get ready because these kids, are they're coming. And they're going to do great things for your city. Uh, so, young know, folks, thank you. We want to have a seat for a second. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I also would be remiss if I didn't thank my colleague and friend, Marianne McIntyre. Marianne, want to stand up, please? Network and she and, and, and her and a colleague Jerry Connavale who couldn't be here today. They ran the first two sessions and did a fantastic job. Work with these kids on leadership. Work with these kids on civic engagement. I don't have to say anything. I mean, look, look, look at what these kids are doing. They're beautifying the community. They're making a difference. They're having an impact, and they're doing that now. So, Marianne, thank you. Anne Marie from Naffy, thank you as well. We appreciate her son behind said, yeah, tell my mother, make sure you give it up for my mom. And uh, so we're really, we're, we're really excited. Sorrell, thank you, Sorrell. Uh, Kathleen, where are you? Can you stand up and wave real quick? Say hi. <laughs> right. Right. I want to thank them too from the Resident Services Department. Again, this is a, it's a partnership. Naffy's been doing this work for a long time, thanks to Dr. McCall and 35 years of service. But this wouldn't be successful without partnership. That's what we're all about. We partnered with the police when we first came here. Thank you, Lieutenant, Major, Chief. We have some friendlies here, and these folks have been with us for the last four years and, and brought us in and want, and want to keep us here. So uh, this is about community building, community engagement, and making sure that we build, we build the most efficient, educated, informed leaders who will then sit in these two seats as well as these seats. So we're very happy. We're very grateful. We're very thankful. And the best is yet to come. So thank you very much for having us, Steve. Really appreciate your vision and your leadership.